Hi, I'm Jean Lawler, your host of the Rose to Resolution Closure and Certainty Podcast. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. You know, as a mediator, as I've often said, I'm invited into other people's lives for a few hours, and uh, it certainly opens the door or opens a window into uh, many, many worlds. So what I wanted to talk about today as the fifth and final episode of my little mini series on insurance and mediation is um, mediating where insurance and insurer is going to be paying the settlement money, where it's insurance money that's paying the settlement. And I have five tips for you. So let's go, let's get started on those. First and foremost, I can't stress how important it is to prepare early for the mediation. To be successful, both attorneys, the plaintiff attorney and the defense attorney, do need time. It can't be a last-minute thing uh, to have the best chance for success anyway. <clears throat> From the plaintiff's perspective, the plaintiff needs the time, the plaintiff counsel needs the time to work with their um, their client and essentially you both need to be able to manage client expectations. So uh, prepare early, share information. If there's documentation that is going to decide major issues or could be really convincing to the other party, whichever way it goes, then share that. Uh, and you can share it under the mediation uh, confidentiality uh uh, laws, rules that may be applicable, although do keep in mind that some state may not recognize another state's confidentiality. So keep that in mind, but share, share what needs to be shared. Uh, so the other can make an informed decision, whether it's their, about their exposure or the true amounts of money involved or receipts, uh, medical records, you know, whatever it might be share and share that early. And then also on an early basis, time basis, share as much of your um, uh, mediation brief as you can, or draft one that can be shared, actually, is probably the better way to put it. And then you can let the mediator know the confidential things separately in a separate, uh, you know, writing or a little small brief on that or in a pre-mediation phone call. But by sharing with the other side a mediation brief that is not just being blustery or, you know, uh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, but is fact-driven and is legally sound, that is what will really help the evaluation that either attorney has to make and, um, and then have the ability to better manage the client expectations think of a plaintiff lawyer has to meet with his client. The client has maybe been injured or whatever, may have uh, big ideas about how much they're entitled to be paid. And maybe that's not what a case would settle for. Uh, but maybe it's better that the case settles. So, or maybe actually the reverse. Maybe the case is really worth a lot of money and it's not just posturing uh, for purposes of settlement. So anyway, one way or another, go early on that as much as possible. And from the insurer's side of it, from the defense side, the defense side, uh, you should know about plaintiff lawyers, the um, defense attorney needs to provide his client or her client with a um, an evaluation and evaluate judgment potential and, and maybe uh, and be prepared to talk settlement ranges. And then the insurer, depending on the case, um, the claims representative, the company, maybe they round table it or, or, or whatever, but they do need time to be able to look at the issues, look at the case, ask for more documents if that's needed. So the earlier and the sooner you can share some of that, the better. And as I mentioned in other um, podcasts that uh, I've had cases before where we had a pre-mediation call and it became clear that one attorney says they needed X and the other attorney says, well, I'll give it to you. And they did. And we moved the date back for the mediation. But then when they came to mediation, they were prepared 
and able to resolve that matter. And in fact, they did resolve the matter. So those are uh, those kinds of things. And then ultimately, manage client expectations, prepare the clients early uh, for that. Okay. Then what about when you get into the mediation itself? Um, you will have a claims representative plus uh, defense counsel on the defense side. You'll have plaintiff counsel and their client uh, on the plaintiff side of it. And on this one, I, I, I do say this, mediation conduct is important. Remember civility. Remember everybody's there to do a job. And um, civility, civility, civility it will get you so much further than if you either side starts you know, slamming the, their books down and threatening to walk out or whatever it might be that is an exaggerated type of, um, uh, type of activity or an emotional type of situation. Under, make sure the attorney, the, 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 actually the mediator, understands from the attorney what's going on with their client and what they might need or not need. Maybe there's a client that needs to be really be listened to. Maybe the client needs to be able to talk to the claims representative. Maybe the claims representative wants to talk to the claimant. Uh, every case is unique. Every mediation session is unique and you need to go with that. But most of all, the conduct is important and how, uh, how the outcome happens usually is best if there's been very professional conduct, even when there's disappointment or not being very happy with a demand or an offer, professionalism always wins one way or another. So then after you have come to the conclusion of the mediation, and ideally you've been able to settle the case, but if you've not settled the case that day, um, that doesn't mean the case cannot be settled. I would recommend that you use that mediation session as a way to then lead to further discussions, whether it's uh, through the mediator, through follow-up telephone uh, negotiations, or another session, or just the lawyers talking to each other. Um, you know, hopefully you've gotten to the point where you see where there's maybe a gap in information, if that's it, or um, other things that can be done. Maybe there's something that needs to be done to then allow the case to be in a better posture or position for settlement. And you can agree to go ahead and do that and then reconvene at you know whatever time. I have had mediations where it's clear early on that the parties need to do something else and they're definitely not going to settle the case without certain information. And we've agreed even to um, pause the mediation, reconvene in a month or, you know, whatever time it is, and, and then work with the council to agree to a schedule uh, by which they would uh, share inf additional information or something else from a factual standpoint that's come up or even a legal standpoint. So these, these sorts of things are, are definitely important. And I'm sure civility will always rule right? Anyway, uh, those are my five tips. And I think that uh, you'll be good to go. So thank you again so much. And uh, that with this particular podcast and video brings to a conclusion, my little mini series of five videos or podcasts about mediating where insurance is involved. So thank you so much and goodbye. We will see you later. Follow me um, and, uh, you know, on all these places. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.